How's it going people? Sam and Slabby here, and this is the third part of the Vampire series, Legacy of the Seagaze. And this will allow you to make your own bloods. So, quest requirements are... You'll be needing 20 construction, 29 agility, 47 crafting, 49 magic, 35 mining, 31 slayer, and 45 megan. And obviously you'll need to have completed that as a Hallowale. You will end up fighting a level 100-ish uh, vampire, so... As long as you've got stuff for that and you're confident killing it, no problem. So items you need, you'll be needing tight teak pyre logs or better, whether that's mage pyre logs or whatever. One cosmic rune, three air runes, two different forms of combat, melee range or mage, mixture of those. I'd highly recommend some teleports to Canifest just to speed things up later on. A silver weapon, you may as well take your silver sickle, blessed, and some druid pouches as you do have to do a run of temple dragon. And bring along some food and equipment to take out a level 100 Viwatch. Quite simple, you'll need a couple of inventory spaces, so I've got five and that seemed to work perfectly fine. But once you're ready, talk to the mercenary just outside Patadermis Temple. If you don't know where that is, it's directly south of the Canifus Slayer Tower, or west of Canifus. And go through all the options, same as usual. Now head into the Patadermis Temple, and we need to talk to Dreddle, who's right by there. Ask about something else, and go through all of his options. Once you've gone through all the options, head through the gate just west of him and go down the stairs to the north and just on the eastern side near the entrance you'll see a flashing light in the wall search it and you'll find out there's a blood tally inside but we can't get it yet, so head back upstairs and head west and exit Patadermis Temple on the Varok side so head up the stairs, go directly south and enter the actual temple here on the ground floor Head up the stairs to the third floor. And once you're here, you'll have a cutscene. So these mobs are like the Black Knight Guardians that you fought in Walgathic Sleeps, or Tormented Demons would be another one where once you've done a certain amount of damage with the form of attack they'll pr protect from melee for example if you was using melee at which point you then need to switch to a different form of combat to do some more damage and r rinse and repeat pretty much so as you can see they just switch to protect melee use a range weapon they switch to protect range switch back to your melee and just take them out they're pretty simple they don't do any damage at all or hardly any damage they're not very hard to kill. And as soon as they're dead, they'll teleport away. On the northwest corner of this room, there should be a desk you want to search. Or a table, I should say and you'll end up getting two items from it. You get a page and some kind of glove. Once you've got them, you want to head 
back down to the ground floor and back into Pantodemus Temple to talk to Drezzle again. So once you're here, talk to Drezzle, ask about something else again, and go through all of his options. Once you finish talking to him, head outside to the south and talk to the mercenary again. And he'll ask you to take him down to Birda Row. To do this, you'll be doing a temple tracking run. It's pretty straightforward. If you've never done it before, you can look up a guide. But I'll try to explain as we go through. You'll start off with this route. The one on the left-hand side is the easy, the middle is medium, and right-hand side is hard. For the sake of argument, let's just go on easy, for the most part. Turns out the mercenary will tell you what's going through if you're going down the easy one, he'll tell you what's next. For the Via Watch, you have to be wielding a silver weapon to kill them, and the vampires. You can get snakes, you can just damage them however you feel. You can also get snails, which you'll be screwed on unless you've got a snail helm. Uh, you can have a group of mercenaries that are ill, all you've got to do to them is just feed them food. They're the only ones I can remember off the top of my head. Oh, Talon Beasts. You can just straight up kill them. No special requirements. Ghasts is the reason we brought along our Druid Pouches, in case you run into one of those. If you don't have enough Druid Pouches, that's why the Silver Sickle was recommended, as you can actually pick up Mortmire Fungus to refill your pouches while you're here. I think that's about it. So it's pretty straightforward. You just have to either kill everything that's in front of you or do the little mini game task. Stick to the easy ones as they're pretty straightforward and you can find out what's coming next. So this is the ill mercenary camp, all you've got to do is use your food on them, and they'll be fully healed. As soon as you've done it to all the mercenaries, you can move on. Just a second. So, as usual, easy mode again. Turns out this one would be a bridge. I'm not doing that, as you need a hammer and hatchet. You can pick them up while you're there. But I can't be bothered. So after you've done this three to five times on different screens, you'll eventually reach Bird of Row.
once you've finally downed a bird of rope, the mercenary will take off his helm and he'll turn out to be a Marek member. So while you head down to the pub, it should be southeast of you. And go down into the basement. And once you're here, talk to Valeif Hertz. Or Valeif Hertz. However you pronounce his name. Go through all of his options, same as usual. Once you've gone through all of his options, he'll end up giving you a box of resources. Once you've got that, head southeast until you hit the dock. And once you're at the dock, jump on the boat, and off to Mayaditch. So now we need to head to the Marek hideout in Mayaditch. There's a couple of options, you can go through the maze, if you would like to go through the maze, or you got a shortcut key, you should know where to go. If not, check out my Darkness from Helleville guide. There's a pretty simple guide to get through it there. In this circumstance though, we're just going to get captured by the Firewatch and go straight to the mines. As it'll make things a little bit quicker. If these two will actually do it. Apparently the ones on the walls don't want to capture you, so head down the stairs or ladder. And jump over the broken wall. And let's get captured by a Firewatch. So, ask to get sent to the mines. Once you're near it, talk to this old dude sitting right in front of me. And ask for a pick. And now you've got to mine 15 ores. You can do it in parts, so I wouldn't worry about having not having enough inventory space. Once you're full, chuck them all into the cart and keep putting them all into the cart until you've mined 15. And finally, once you've mined 15, talk to one of the Viawatch walking around.
you'll end up topside at the very north side of the Sanguestine area just pretty much head directly south you don't need to enter any houses keep going south until you can't go anymore so once you're finally down as south as you can go this should be a house right by here that has got two doors you can run straight through and there should be a ladder in the house directly opposite as you can see on screen if you want to go through here and enter the house with the ladder and head up you want to jump to the east house and head down the stairs push the wall just to the southeast and touch the symbol on the wall this will open up the trap door head on down so head up to the northern side and talk to Safalan once you've talked to him you want to talk to Flagian Scroot should be on the left hand side or Flagian Scroot however the hell he pronounces his name go through all of his options and he'll tell you about creating a brand new weapon So once you've gone through all of his options, talk to Kale Forshaw, should be just to your right somewhere. And go through his options. And he'll recommend making a flail. So, time to get an instruction book. Head to your south, and in the centre chamber, there'll be a bunch of bunk beds. Search the bunk beds until you end going a book. Once you find the book, you want to read it pretty carefully and find the part where it mentions what page flails start on. This is random for everybody. So for me, it's 73. So once you've read the book, you want to head back to Flegan And hand him the book. He'll ask you for the page number. Type in whatever the page number was for you. So, you'll end up giving you a hammer and ten nails. At this point you want to exit this hideout. So head directly south and climb up the stairs. Push the wall to exit. And up the stairs again. Jump to the western building.
and down the stairs. And now it's time to head almost all the way back to where we just came from, the mines. And in one of the houses on the right hand side as you're running up, there should be a pillar that you should be able to right click on or have the left click option of make ladder. I say pillar. Post would probably be more accurate. So head up directly north as far as you can. And just past the laboratory is this building right here. It's right next to the mine. You want to enter this and make a ladder on the wooden post. So as soon as you've made that, head on up, then jump to your east, then jump to your north, and jump to the northwestern building. And once you're in here, head upstairs, and check the barrel, and you'll get some coal. Pick up the tinderbox right next to it. And if for whatever reason you didn't go through the mines, you can pick up the pickaxe right next to you. Whilst you're up here, you'll also want to check the trough. You'll get a little mini cutscene. So now we want to head downstairs. And downstairs again. and search the massive mess where the furnace should be. You then want to excavate it. Once it's fully excavated, you want to use your coal on the furnace and then you want to light it with your tinderbox. So once the furnace is lit, we now need to head back to the hideout and tell Flegian what we just done. So head on back, go to the middle floor, jump to the east, jump to the south. Then you want to jump to the west, climb down the ladder, or makeshift ladder we just made. Head through the door and run all the way south again. There is quite a lot of back and forth, so hopefully you'll remember it. So go through these doors again, back into the house with the ladder, climb up the ladder, jump to the eastern house, and down the stairs, open up the trap door, head into the hideout. So, once you're in the hideout, you want to talk to Flegian again. And this time you'll tell us to make a flail. So you get a little cutscene, point under the barrels, carry on talking to the old man, 
and as soon as you finished, check that barrel. You will receive two silver bars and two mithril bars. We will be needing those. If you haven't got a breast, a uh, blessed sickle, you can get one off the shelf. Right by here. So once you've got your two silver bars, two myth bars, and a blessed silver sickle, exit the hideout, and we now need to head back up to the furnace. But before we do, almost forgot, just east of the ladder, you need to check the box for a chain link mold. Sorry about that. So once you've got your chain link, your four bars, and the blessed sickle, head out of the hideout and back up to the furnace. So up the ladder, jump to the west, down the ladder, run all the way north. If you keep getting caught by the Viwatch like me, just try to distract them. It works most of the time. And then you can just carry on running. So once you're back up here, climb back up your makeshift ladder. Jump to the east, then the north, then into the northwestern house, and then finally downstairs to the furnace. Once you're here, you want to use your silver bar on the furnace. Make sure you've got the chain link mold in your inventory. It may work in your tool belt, I'm not sure, as I didn't try it. And make a silv thrill chain. So, once you've got your chain, we now need to head all the way back down to Flagian, back in the hideout. So, head all the way south again. So, once you're finally back into the hideout, talk to Flagian. And as soon as you finish talking to him, you then want to use your Silver Sickle Blessed on Flagian. Go through the options.
and you'll take the sickle and the chain off you. As soon as you finish talking to him, you then want to talk to Safalan. And he'll tell us to go to the laboratory. But before we leave, check the shelf or tool racks on the side and pick up a saw. Make sure you pick that saw up. And once you've done that, exit the hideout. So again, push through the door and head up the ladder. And jump to the western building. And then climb down the ladder. And exit north. And we're running back up north again. On your right hand side as you're running up north, you'll come across a room with the tapestry inside. We need to enter that room. So as you can see, the tapestry is right by there. The red and gold trim door looking thing. So head in there. Click on the tapestry to pass through it. Open the door and head down the trapdoor, or staircase even. You'll then get a little cutscene. Check the bodies. Go through the options. Once you've done all that, head south. And there should be a door there. You then want to use your saw on the door. You can only cut the one side of the door. So if it says you can't cut this side, try the other. You'll then get another cutscene of you demolishing a door and we'll now enter the Maya Ditch dungeon future reference there are mutated blood veils in here which are very good for Slayer as you can cannon them but they are quite a high level so as soon as you're ready run all the way through we will be going past level 186 blood veils if I remember rightly and they do use magic so you could protect from mage if you want but follow this long ass tunnel and eventually you'll come to an opening where you've got mobs on either side of you ignore both of them and just keep going north and then when you come to a T-junction, head west and you'll notice just north of you a big ass room, you want to head in there and you'll get another little cutscene. So everyone will spread out. You want to head towards the runecrafting symbol. And you want to check the strange rocks, or stones even. You then want to search the skeleton body next to you. And that will end up giving you some runes. We then need to talk to Safalan.
couple of eye watchers will pop up. You can't actually kill them. You just gotta wait until Savalan takes enough damage. Which really doesn't take that long. So eventually you'll see the little cutscene where you start spazzing out. And eventually he'll automatically take you back to the hideout. So once you're back in the hideout, talk to Safalan again. Now you need four inventory spaces. And as soon as you've got four inventory spaces, talk to Safalan again and he'll give you the materials needed to create an Evandis flail. So, once you've got all the items, you want to use your emerald on a blessed sickle. You then want to level 2 enchant it, which is the emerald enchant on the sickle. You then want to use the chain link on the sickle, the silver chain. And you'll create a filial of Avandis. So, time to equip it. You want to talk to Safalan again, and he'll tell you to go kill a Watch. So, easy enough. Head south and exit the hideout. And now just find the closest Watch, poke it until it dies and pick up his corpse. The easiest one to do that is go to the point where you go down the ladder again and there's a Watch literally just south of that house. So go ahead and rip him a new one. If you're a lower level, you can protect from melee you. You should easily kill it before your prayer runs out. It will take quite a while to kill him with this shite weapon. You have to use the Phileal of Avandis, otherwise you won't do any damage to them. So once you've finished it off and got your corpse, we then want to head back into the hideout and we have to talk to Safalan again. So, once you're back in the hideout, talk to Safalan. And he'll tell us to go and inform Valaif Hertz back in Birda Row about the progress. So, if you brought your cannabis teleport, now's the time to use it. If not, and you need to get out but you don't know how, refer to my 
dark as a Harrowville guide. As that shows you how to get through there using the house agility course. I'm using my house teleport and the Carol portal. You can also be on Ancients, use the Carol teleport, use an ectophile. Plenty of ways to get over there. Slayer ring. Either way, once you're here, we now need to head down to Bird of Row and talk to Valaif. Easiest way to do that is just behind the pub there's a trap door. Climb down it, head all the way south. And eventually you'll come across another door we can go through. So, go through the door, head directly south again. And you'll notice just on your left hand sides, there's a tree you can climb up. Head on up. And then head directly south again. Follow the pond slightly to the west. And eventually, you'll come across a boat. Jump in the boat. Alternatively from this, you could just simply do a temple track and run. It may take slightly longer, but, well, it's temple track and run, may as well do it. Then, from the boat, simply head southwest. And eventually you'll come to Bird of Rock. So again, head into the pub, and down into the cellar. Talk to Valaif Hertz. Go through all of his options. So, once you finally finish talking to him, we now need to head all the way back up to Patadermis, so another teleport to Canafit if you've got it. And we need to talk to Drezel. Inside the temple. So, head on over to Patadema's Temple, and we'll be talking to Drezel. So, once you hear it, go through all of his options. And as soon as you've gone through his options, head through the gate to the west and head up the stairs, or down the stairs to the north side, I should say. And head over to the centre of this room. This is the place where you burn via watch corpses. So, that's what we're going to do. So, use your pyre logs on one of these, then use the via corpse on it, and then light it.
you do get quite a chunk of prayer XP when you do these. You can get some awesome items from actually doing the Viwatch corpses after this. But I'd highly recommend waiting until you've completed branches of Darkmire. As you will then get access to blisterwood weapons. Plus you need 500 kills to make them as powerful as they can be. Anyway, once you've burnt it, check the little altar right next to it and you'll pick up a key, an ornate key. You then want to use that ornate key on the shelf where we found the blood talisman earlier and you'll end up getting it. You'll then get a cutscene, Drazzle will come down and talk to you. So once you've got your blood talisman we then need to head up the stairs and we need to talk to Drazzle one more time. And go through his options again. And once you finish talking to him, finally go back down to Birderot and talk to Relief Hertz and tell him everything that happened. So again, the little trap door behind the pub in Canifes, or Temple Dragon, whichever you prefer. Make your way down. This is the final step of the quest, so congratulations on completing Legacy of Seagaze. So, finally, the very last step. Once you're in Buda Rot, or Buda Rot, however you say it, we now need to go back down to the pub, down the trapdoor into the cellar, and finally talk to the leaf hurts. So go ahead and talk to him and run through all of his options. And eventually, boom! Quest complete. So, for completing this quest, you actually get 2k in a hell of a lot of skills, you also be able to make your own blood runes. You've also got the Evandis Flail, you'll be given a Tome of Second Edition which gives you 7.5k XP in whatever skill above 35 you want. Uh, you'll be given your Blood Talisman obviously. You'll also have access to the Mayaditch Dungeon which includes the Blood Velds and Mutated Blood Velds, Zombie Hands and Skeletal Hands. Also a shortcut to the original Marek Hideout You'll also gain access to the Furnace in Mayaditch, not that that's very useful. Access to the Columbarium beneath Patadermis, which is where we burnt the Via Corpse, so you can now burn Via Corpses for rewards. I'd highly recommend waiting until Branches of Darkmire, for obvious reasons. And additionally, you'll also unlock a Via Watch event within Temple Dragon. So, next week Friday will be Branches of Darkmire, and... The Mondays from now, 
until three weeks from now will be the requirements for Goliath gloves. I'll also be having the Dominion Tower carried up as soon as possible. Hope you all enjoy.